let's start it's uh the hour so thank thank you for joining and uh, if you are on the lgm online channel here please give your feedback on the lgm workshop channel oh up it's here this one um i will just go through a little bit of uh, of an introduction first it's a uh, a set of slides I made uh, for the theoretical part. So first, this is a little tradition in my video, and sorry for my heavy French accent. Uh, I do my best. I try to think about my sentences. It's not that I'm uh, I'm dumb or something. No, uh, I'm trying to speak the best I can in French, and it's very, uh, in English. Sorry, and it's difficult. So I hope you will be able to understand me and. If there is a word that you can't understand, feel free to ask in the chat and I will repeat or I will try to rephrase my sentence at this moment. So a bit of presentation about myself. I'm the author and drawer behind the project Pepper and Carrot. It's an open source comic project. And if you are probably on the chat, you probably already know it. So I'm skipping this part. And uh, I'm streaming and I'm broadcasting right now on this place in France, and it's really in the south. And uh, yeah, that's a bit of shame because yeah, LGM was just here this year, the real event version, and uh, that wasn't a, a big distance for me to go for once. And yeah, it will be the next time. So I see a lot of friendly name on the chat. That, that's it. Very good. Thank you. Um, about the limitation about this uh, live stream, uh, I'm changing a lot of things on my desktop to make this live stream. Uh, first, I disconnected my second screen. So I'm not really used to use a computer with one screen anymore. I, I, I probably have pop up that will appear on this ghost screen. Uh, I still use my Intuos 4. XXL, my big uh, uh, tablet. And um, yeah, as you can see about the font size, I tried to boost the font size. And also, this is a Quaid HD screen. So no normally, I have a lot of resolution. It's a 27 inch. And now I'm displaying it in uh, 1080p. So yeah, for me, it's a very big pixel and blurry experience I have now. So this is not my optimal condition where I work usually. And of course, I have cats. So they will hear myself speaking alone at home. And sometimes they will try to reply. So you might hear them on the microphone or see them the, the tail that crossed the, the screen like this. This is totally normal. So first, I want to thank um, all my patrons, because uh, if I can take the time to prepare this workshop and if I can take the time to make it and to record it, I wanted to say that thank you for all the per person who send money to, the, to me for making pepper and carrot and making all the extra tutorial and live stream that I do around. And also, all this content will be under Creative Commons Attribution License. And uh, that's a bit hard because I had to find reference under Creative Commons Zero or Public Domain to, to make some uh, research. So everything that appears on the screen is uh, uh, compatible with the license. So you, you can broadcast this on a classroom if you want, or you can reuse it and sell it on a, a, a video stream platform. There is no problem. So dragons, dragons, dragons. Uh, over the last six years, I admit that I don't draw very high fantasy dragons now. I'm more drawing cartoony dragons. And these are the ones that you can see on, on pepper and carrot right now. They're, these are funny dragons with big eyeball and uh, sometimes very dramatic expression. And I, I very like, I, I, I think I really uh, like this style about pepper and carrot and I, I take a, a very I enjoy my time doing that but before that 
I use it to be a more fantasy traditional artist and this is a bit, a bit recent even. So uh, you probably know the Sintel project. I did the art direction and the design for the creature. And today in this workshop, we will uh, not learn to make a full scene with uh, the ambience and uh, all the dragon and a little human and everything. It would take too much time. I, I want to make uh, the workshop duration one big hour after I finish this little introduction. So um, I will mostly draw a head of dragons and I will try to make a little environment around it. You'll see. I have a little idea about what I will do. So I wanted to make a little point about anatomy of animal before starting to paint a dragon because this is uh, the ground, the base for for starting uh, such a painting. And first, you will probably see that um, we have wings like bats. Uh, we have uh, a lot of common thing with reptile, uh, the same aggressiveness and uh, sometimes position than tigers, uh, the type of neck of this type of big birds, uh, scale of snakes, or sometimes scale of crocodile like this on the tail the teeth of dinosaurs uh, so yeah it, it's a uh, it's pretty good to, to start with looking at this creature when you want to design your dragons because uh, looking how this creature works will make your dragon more believable your design more credible so i made a little overlay here to to just understand better the the key things that we will try to reproduce and for the bat style of, uh, of wings, I'm not sure we will have time to make wings, but why not? Uh, wings of bat are really like big ends. You have the thumb here and here you see you have the, the big fingers uh, that works like a hand. So if you have already some fundamental about drawing hands, it's not that big and not that a problem. You just have to make a lot of big clothes between the the finger like big webbing and it works uh, one of the things that i will insist during this workshop is to do a lot of triangle shape because uh, if you see the reptilian reference here you can see that even not on the creature even on the empty space we have triangle shape that draws a lot and this is something that will be very common when we will draw and paint a dragon. We will try to uh, design this type of uh, pointy shapes. And just as a reminder, um, in art, shapes, uh, uh, it's the two dimensional things that you see here. And uh, for the 3D object like this, uh, width and this, we, we speak more like form. Uh, it's a bit... Uh, yeah, we can say also 3D shape and 2D shape if, if you are more comfortable with it. But yeah, we will try to make good form that does good shapes. Uh, for the teeth, if we do draw teeth, uh, you can see that the upper part on this T-Rex go way more deeply than the lower part. So this is something good to to keep in mind and also that we have this type of cylinder here that yes you can see that this type of 3d shape cylinder that define the axis for the jaw of the of the reptile so this is the type of shape we will try also to to rebuild uh, for the other part yeah this uh, of course not going much more than a simple S for the neck. If we make more wave, it will look more like a snake and not be believable. And here you can find also this type of axis for the jaw and how also the, the skull is very flat. Uh, not a lot of, not a big brain into this type of animal. Uh, you can see here, very flat. You have eyes and directly flat. Flat here also. So that's that's all for speaking and slides. And now we will start painting. So 
do, 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 do. I have a Krita open here. I will put my webcam here into keep above other. Yeah, so I can focus this little button of Firefox. I will try to push it on the side. Uh, checking if, yes, recording is happening in six minutes. It's good. So if you have questions before starting to paint, that's the time. And I will reply them on LGM workshop. You can see them here. Oops. So I will start to create a new file and I will try to be a bit slow at first so you can follow with your Krita at home. So I'm creating a custom file, custom document, empty. The dimension, I will put a 2400 by 2400. It will be a square because you can see on my screen here that I have a square. So I will try to fill this part, but feel free to take uh, uh, something more cinematic, more something wide if you want. Uh, for the resolution, I keep this one RGB 8 byte and the default sRGB profile. And then I create the document. So I will just adapt the zoom a bit with control and space. And I'm thinking I can also display my keyboard shortcut. Good. So space, control, and then I can zoom. Yep. Yes, fonts are a bit too small, but I, I will try to explain uh, the... Uh, I, I can't make the font bigger now because uh, I, I would need to to restart all the all Krita and maybe all the desktop. So I will try to, to describe more when I open a menu, but uh, you must understand that I put the font very, very big. Uh, compared to what I am used to work, it's like three times larger than my usual setup. So I usually have a lot of room here and here also. So. so once we have a canvas like this, name it background, this is perfect. I'll try to fill it with a color because my monitor, this white is very too strong. It's like a, a light source that's coming to my eyes right now. So I will try to take not a blue, not a teal, but something in between like this. The default color selector of Krita is this one, but I pick this one. Feel free. It, it works for both. It's just a personal preference. But yeah, I'm taking teal and I'm, I'm not taking full saturation. I'm taking something that is more near to gray, but a bit bright at the same time. Maybe this, I, I'm looking for um, a sort of a sky of a morning, maybe like that. And I will fill the background with it, edit, and fill with foreground color. Uh, I do it by shortcut usually, but here I show the menu. And once I have this background, I will just go ahead and here on the layer, click a new layer, and I will name it by double clicking on the layer, dragon. This is where we will have our dragon uh, painting. And before going further, I'm going to save my document and I will just name it dragons and save. So for the dragon, we will use a speed painting technique because this is the purpose of the, of the workshop. I, I'm looking a bit at the circular web. Read text in a chat window. Oh, good. So about speed painting, I will not spend time into drawing something and then filling with color. We will directly paint with shapes. It will save me a lot of time, but it's not really intuitive. So if it's your first time you're drawing with shapes and 
a dragon is a bit too complex, you can try to make something more simple, like a cylinder, a, a, a cube or something. And uh, these are good studies. And same if making things with color is a bit too complex for you, you can do this workshop also in black and white. It will ease a lot your task. So for the color, the base color of the dragon, uh, I will not go to the association I have in mind that, uh, oh, it's a green, it's a reptile, the lizard are green. No, it's not like that. Uh, I would pick a greenish color, but a bit more teal and a dark. I would probably go like this, like 20% and very desaturated uh, sort of uh, green colors because I I'm looking at the color of the shadow of a stone because these are big animals. I want the same color than the rhinoceros or the elephant color. Yeah. So you have to put a lot of thinking about your color head when you do this type of painting. And I will pick this brush. This is the F dry roller. I will use only brush from the, from the default Krita brush kit for this uh, workshop. So you don't have to install anything. I made a little collection of brush here for the LGM, but uh, I will pick them one by one and explain every time. So uh, this is a brush you have on your list. And I will paint a lot with this one at first. So I will start to paint and to try to reproduce this cylinder we saw on the cheeks of the reptile. So I try to paint a face of the cylinder. I try to paint to extrude it this way, like a shape. And then because it's now just a silhouette, I will try to also put a light on it and I will pick just a, a little warmer. So I going like that to the yellow, just a little bit warmer color. So I have now this part that is more bright and on the top also. We will start with a very basic lighting setup, just a single point light. And I want a, a very dim light on the top like that. So we have this type of cylinder that is a bit puffy on, on each side because this is the cheeks of the reptile. I'm showing you the shape I have in mind right now because it's not really described. Uh, this type of painting probably don't show it clearly. It's a bit hard to, to paint and explain at the same time, but I'm just making a bit of shading, but this part will not be visible. Now I will extend all of this because now with this cylinder, I have also an axis, a direction here. So I'm extending this using the light color because this is a face that face the light coming from the top. And I will just paint like a shape of a big arrow here. So I'm doing a socket already for the eyes because ah, we'll, I will not paint geometrical shape very longer. This is just for you to get uh, what is happening. And as you can see, I'm using control here to pick color when I want to keep the color of the light or the color of the shadow. I will draw a huge shadow here under the neck and we will plug the neck to something. So right now we are designing just shape. And if your shape with this brush looks a bit, uh, the edge is a bit dirty, you can switch with pressing the E key on the keyboard here or uh, by pressing this button on the top toolbar and your brush will just switch for an eraser and you can then polish the silhouette of your, uh, it's not a dragon right now, it's more like a just a simple lizard without eyes and a bit squarey.
And then we will start to pick color of our shadow. I will start to crease here just a volume. I will just soften here. So I have like a socket for the highball. I have also for the sort of a highbrow volume here. So I'm just sculpting with a brush. And I will try under the eyes to recover this shape that we lost a bit. And also the eye socket shows now a little problem here. We have too much room for a big brain that doesn't look like a big reptile. So I need to flatten this a bit. Maybe this way. So this process is a uh, try to take the overall and I know that it's a, a bit uh, always a problem when we start drawing because we young artists want to directly dive into detail, draw eyes, draw horn, draw everything. But here I'm trying to, to get the mass of the, the big shape working and speaking at the same time. It's not evident. Okay. So into this carved relief, I will just put a little ball socket like this. And I will crease it with the eye. I will keep a white eyes right now. And this will be the, the first detail I'm adding to this piece. I'm trying to correct a bit the shading. With direct painting, one of the problem is, and one of the drawbacks is, you don't have a solid drawing to define your symmetry and your volume and your axis. So there is a lot of uh, correction to do on the fly, but at the same time, it's really quick. So I will do another socket right now for the nostril. Maybe like that. And I will crease a bit the shadow here. And also the body was a bit tubular. So if I want to, to paint without going outside, I can lock here on the layer, there is a little padlock to click on it and I can lock the shape and just paint like this to get a, a sort of gradient. <laughs> so now for the mouth, we saw that on this volume at the center we had an axis and this is logical to respect it because we need to open the jaw uh, if he if he breath if he eat uh, uh, or if she why not I, I don't know why this dragon should be a male or female oh. and we have a mouth that comes a bit like that um, these shapes here and like that is because we have usually the lower part of the mouth that is very thin uh, and, and the, high, the, the higher part very large. And this is because here we need to, to, to make a lot of room for breathing and here inside for the tongue, for chewing, for everything. So if you do a mouth that is go like this, you will not get a good result. So this is something also a pattern on our reference that is important to look at. Uh, for the teeth, I will draw teeth coming this way, this way, and this way. I will zoom in a bit because 
it's very big on my screen, but maybe on your, it's so little. And for the teeth that goes under, I would try to, to, to go in between like that. So now we have more like a dinosaur, like a raptor or something. And it's totally normal. Uh, dragons and dinosaur are a bit on the same uh, family, <laughs> I would say. So that one is not real, of course. So I'm still not designing any scale. Are you sure dragon have a tongue? We are sure of nothing about dragons. I never saw one in real life. Um, one of the things that will make our dragon uh, very dragonish like will be horn. So th there is not a lot of reptile with big horn like, uh, you know, like that this, you draw here, you plug two things and you put like a thing like that, thing like that, thing like that. And, and directly you get something that looks from a lizard or from a raptor to a dragon. This and the wing, of course. Um, I will just do an incremental saving, save incremental version. So I will get my dragons underscore 001.krA. So it's good to, to, to save some step by step and not override the previous format. But for this dragon, if you remember the, the triangle shape pattern, yeah, I will try to do this. And, and this brush is not really good for triangle. You see here, the, the ending point is not good for that, but yeah, with digital, it's really hard to get good ending point, pointy. For that, you better go to press the eraser key and erase to get this type of dynamic shape. So doing the second horn or anything that requires a bit of perspective is always a problem. And I prefer to paint it without caring a lot about it at first. And then I will press M to mirror my artwork. So I can see now the, the, the perspective problem because yeah, we have this type of perspective right now. And I'm almost good, but you see this point should be here to be aligned. And this, yeah, it's not perfect. So for this, I will use the transformation tool. I'm doing a quick selection. You see here, I selected this selection tool with a shortcut and I press Ctrl T and I'm just playing with right click, liquify. And so I can just adapt the shape a bit. I can press mirror again, M key on the keyboard. So I get another like fake point of view and I can try to align better this, but this is a painting and yeah, Usually I would take extra care. I will draw the line on another layer, but we will try to be quick on this one because there is still a lot of things to do. So, yep. I'm taking back my brush, B key, to be sure to not be in transform mode. And now I will lock this layer because I don't want to paint over the edge of this horn. And I will pick just a, maybe a very grayish brown Boop, like that. I, I just want to get this dry nail uh, horn things material. And right now all the material looks very dull and this is normal. This is something that I, I usually do because it's, it's really f easier to, to make the things more saturated later and uh, more shiny, more contrasted than to do the reverse. I have more struggle myself, maybe other artists not, about making something uh, very contrasted and very saturated, uh, uh, suddenly well-balanced. 
So I will continue to add some feature for our dragon. Uh, one of the classic one is this type of uh, of webbing of uh, here. So it's not it's not here because the here all will be here. This creature need to to listen to the environment, and and to to make this, we can. Uh, expect this creature to suddenly listen to, to, to everything happening around it. And also it makes the, the, a good decoration. There is so much of things you can play with this decoration. Once you have this Velociraptor shape, base shape, you can go very crazy and uh, the only thing is just keep pointy stuff to, to keep a, a language because if suddenly you, you go just uh, with with circle, there is already a big circle here and a, a sort of circle here, ah, yeah. it will be uh, hard to identify it as a aggressive maybe creature or dominant creature. And when we draw dragons, except when I do with pepper and carrot, and then I can make funny creature. But if you want to make high fantasy dragon, you want to make them a bit more aggressive look, like wild creature. You can also decide to, to make an expression very wise. It, it works really well with dragons. So I'm shading here. Duk, duk, duk. And I have also the other side, but for the other side, I, I want to just paint with a layer under, so I can just paint what I want behind it. This is very convenient. And I will keep it just as a shape like that. I will see with the mirror, it's not perfect. Maybe this is better. Yeah, more in background like that. And then we, we will start to, to take care of um, the scale and a bit of texture because right now we have just big shape, but it doesn't look really good. I will flat the dragon over this layer and rename dragons like that. And uh, my shapes here are a bit like uh, feels a bit like potatoes, I feel. So what I do is I go save incremental. I will take a zoom back. I will draw with Control R a big selection around my creature, and I press Control T and go to liquify. And with this, this is pretty intensive. Huh? I'm doing the live streaming at the same time. There is the webcam. There is the recording in background. So Krita is usually very butter smooth for this, but... So I'm just going a bit pointy like this, you see? And Liquify is very good for this. You can push a little bit your design into the direction you, you, you prefer. And yeah, this is a bit more aggressive than what it was before. I deselect and before going further on the detail I think I have the time because I'm pretty quick finally I'm on the schedule of what I want to do to do some environment so I, I will be lazy about the environment <laughs> Can they also sing? Yeah, in my comic they can, yeah. <laughs> and um, I do the lazy things to just not get a head cut like this, to get the dragon going outside of the water. So this is very convenient to hide a big part of the dragon. Uh, I will plug on the back some start of the wing here but we will not draw them. 
I can probably center it a little bit on my piece to get a little bit more room. So I press the T key to get the move tool. So right now it's still very dual. It's still just our shape, just mod led. And we will add some lighting effect later. But I need to get the environment be before getting the light correctly. So yeah, wings. And I still keep the same brush for all of that. That's one of the default, one of the very good one. It has a subtle texture if you paint with it. You see, there is a, a little paper texture like a painting with gouache, maybe. Doom, 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 doom. So I will just erase a bit the base of our dragon. Plop, like this. Just to be sure that this shape is also like in a perspective plan. And I will just draw on the background. Uh, it's time for incremental save. Each big step for me. Dual is pronounced dual, not dual. Ah, dull, like dull, like this, dull. Thank you. What about nice dragon? <laughs> yeah, if, if you want to attract my attention on the chat, feel free to quote my uh, my nickname, Divad, uh, like like this. I would say. So you will see the the sentence will be in yellow and it will be easier for me to catch it. Um, I will pick this brush for making the background, Dry Bristol. It's also a Krita 4 default resource uh, brushes. So you can find it uh, on all Krita installed directly. So G Dry Bristol, if you can't read the name. And this brush, has really expressive uh, stroke. It's very good for making backgrounds and, and you get a lot of uh, tiny detail for free. So I will just pick my color with control and just go picking a darker tone here. Maybe this is a bit too dark. And I want to just go like that. We'll reduce the opacity and I want to make a gradient like that, maybe. Up, lower. Whoops. If I erase the background, there is alpha. It's totally normal. Up. But I won't just disappear like a like on a lake, sort of lake with some mist on the background. This is also very convenient to not have to draw a lot of things. I will create a new layer just because I want this type of shape here some ripple in the water. I will go back to 100 opacity because yeah, this looks really better. And because I want spiky stroke, I will erase just to get more dynamic stroke. Well, like that, maybe. It's um, just a bit of fun to always go to the economy of stroke for speed painting because uh, it saves time at the same time it looks good so and like that and for the sky oh this is misty but maybe not so much i think i can manage to make a a quick background so I will pick this color. I will keep this new layer still good to can erase a bit. And I, I will probably paint some big cloud. Woohoo, I have some slowdown, but this is normal. It's not because uh, really of Krita. I'm, I'm really used on this computer to get very amazing performance, but with the screen recording and everything, it's a bit uh, normal. 
but this big brush uh, it's perfect for this type of big stroke in background so I will model quickly on it something that look like I don't know clouds distant clouds of the morning maybe this way um, I see that on the dragon I, I painted accidentally a part like that probably color picked it so I have to clean that it's something that happens really often so I will pick the dragon layer press the E key to erase and boop, erase this part tuk, 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 tuk. I just do a, a save incremental and read the chat Looks like we've reached the full capacity of the stream server. Record blown. Oof, beyond 100. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for watching. And sorry if you have some slowdown on your side. I will try to, to put the record, the screen record later uh, somewhere. You can replay. Uh, and, and thank you big time for Anim Team, Timothy, and uh, Elisa, and Cedric who do a, an amazing job at the technique behind this event and uh, we we'll also keep doing things with uh, with free and open source software with this Jitsi server and not relying on ser on service like uh, Twitch or YouTube this is a very very beautiful effort they are doing so this is cool um, so where I was on this uh, background I want to make a light source now. So the light source, I will pick, uh, I will just flatten this into the background. I don't need a lot of layer, just my object, just the background. And I want to make um, the sun rising, maybe. Do you sometimes use the texture stamps for water ripple? Yes, yes, I, I do, I do. Uh, it's uh, what Mark is speaking about is this stamp here stamp water and it works really well but um, more when you have a little river or when you have an ocean a sea maybe i will use it i, I will keep it you, you will see i have a little idea and this is a good suggestion i will just async to tag and put it in my lgm 2020 here yeah so so i have it here but before that i need to add a light source to my background so I will just quick save, just an, a regular save. I will pick a very saturated color, li like this. It's dark and saturated. It's a, like a very dark red. And I'm picking this brush, Adjust Dodge. And this Adjust Dodge uh, is part also of the Krita default resource. I will not repeat it every time. This conference is all, this workshop is always default. And I will just paint just a bit the sky like this, very lightly, because I don't want to overdo it, but I want to get sort of uh, the light coming from a morning. I think this type of red who will give a good contrast with the green of the of our creature so I don't want to overdo it I will just pick a bit and I will try to make something just so I can use the the little stamp texture like that I will pick the brush the one texture red and I will paint on this background, maybe a little sun like that. Well, I need to go into the bright value a lot. Whoop, really reaching white almost. Yeah, let's make a little sun like this in the background. I will have to adapt the lighting on the dragon, but it's perfect for a rim light. It's a very thin light and this is very good for showing later. So. I will take this stamp that is part of the Krita default and I will use it to make this type of tiny re reflection here, oh, quickly like that. 
but ah, it's a bit too much detailed. This is a background and you see that this type of noise here has a lot of detail and this type of detail, because it's a speed painting piece, uh, if I have to keep this detail, I will have to detail everything like this twice. So what I will do is I will take a blender. It's a brush that blend a bit the, the detail and I will blur it a bit like that. So yeah, it works for some sort of speed painting. Maybe here I could have done it manually quicker. <laughs> I will just okay so for the rim light before I have to adjust the dragons um, we have a problem with the lighting there is no texture yet there is a lot of things empty um, Diva do you sometimes use the texture water for repair yeah, okay beautiful light thank you Ramon <laughs> um, I will adapt the our dragon because now we have an environment and this environment is a bit bluish with a bit of uh, red inside sorry so i have to to adapt it and i will use color balance for this it's control b and this is this dialogue but with the big font you probably see something happening um i want to go to a bit uh, more cyan maybe on the shadow no we are more red so yes my shadow will go slightly more to the red here and slightly more to the blue um yeah maybe the mid tones going slightly to the cyan and i will just check with preview before and after and this contrast of color i prefer I will also press Ctrl M to get the color adjustment curve and I will try to fix a bit the contrast here. So it will be tricky because I just want just a little push, it's not something big, but just like that. So the value pops a little bit more. And then I will start to paint the rim light. So for the rim light, I have to uncheck the color to alpha. I'm picking here this pencil. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry for going too fast. I, I'm trying to make it uh, in the time. But yeah, okay. Okay for the replay. And I will pick this charcoal pencil medium brush and I will pick directly the color of the sun. And I will try to not overdo it yeah, it's very subtle, so I will zoom so you can see what I'm doing. And I will try to collect the little f form here that face this light source. And because this is backward, I mean, it's behind the model, there is not a lot of shapes that catch this type of things. But because this is high value, so when I speak high value, it's not the mathematical value or the software value. It's just mean uh, something brighter and darker. Uh, and we have uh, artwork that is pretty dark value. Uh, it's really catch the high. And, and that's what I want. It's, it's not, for example, detail all the horn of the dragon for the texture, but just suggest there is a texture by how the light boons on it. And yeah, maybe we have here on the dragon itself just a little reflection. And yeah, I, I would try to keep it subtle. I think it's uh, the key for a good rim light is to not overdo it. <laughs> so I uh, thank you for the comments, Diva. I would like to see how you add some subsurface scattering in the ear. Oh, that's a good request. So subsurface scattering, and yes, this artwork is totally valid. Thank you, Ramon, because I, I would probably skip this part. 
Uh, subsurface scattering is when you have um, some light that goes through a material, but this material show a bit of it and um, basically the face behind here is in full light and here you get a little bit of light. And what happens very often is if you have some blood inside the material, because it's a living creature here, we will see some red appearing and some high saturation at the same time. And this is a good job for this brush. Um, this is the Adjust Overlay Burn. It's a part of the, of the Krita default. And I will pick just a, a very saturated dark red like this and oops, maybe over the mid because I want to brighten. And I will go like this, but it's, I need to push it a bit more. So there is always a little bit of cooking things here. This is too dark. Uh, I don't have the result I want. Maybe I will try with uh, the color dodge, adjust dodge that is a bit more violent, but maybe it's because I'm doing red over green. And uh, so you see, you, you get usually an effect a bit like that, that appear and yeah, this is more or less accurate. <laughs> like that. And you get also tiny detail that happened that you can see through. So yeah, you have little burn and little stuff that can appear that makes some lovely details. <laughs> For the texturing of our dragons, uh, I will use a, a ready-made texture for Krita. Uh, this is this one, the texture reptile one. And it's a texture that if you can, if you take with a bright color, you directly get all this scale for free. Ah, that's, that's something uh, that is interesting for me. So I will just build another layer I will put it into um, something a bit more subtle, like the soft light SVG uh, blending mode. And I will try to, to leave a little bit of texture. So my texture pattern here is really too small. It adds a lot of detail and I, I do not really like that. So I will go to the pattern. I will scroll down to the pattern here on the brush editor and I will go to the option and just boost the scale by almost two. Like uh, it was 0 0.50 and I want maybe 0 0.19. And with this brush now, yeah, I have larger scale that fits more the scale of my artwork. Wow, that was a not expected pun. <laughs> And so this is not really good scale, but yes, you know, you get them for free somewhere. So you can't expect them to, to, to be wrapped perfectly around your surface. What I'll do now to make them integrate a little bit better is to reduce the opacity. That's why I put them on a, on a layer. So yeah, we keep this detail very subtly. It's not a waffle. We, we don't need to see all the all, all the crease. <laughs> And I will pick this blending brush just to break a bit the texture here and there. So it's smudging a bit the texture. Every part where I see it's too much, I smudge. So yeah, we keep it really subtle like this. I'm not even sure it's visible on the stream, but yeah, good enough for speed painting, I mean. For a full illustration, I would paint them one by one. I know that I'm enough crazy for that. So I'm merging, sorry, <clears throat> time to drink a bit of water and I will read also. Mark, for the subsurface scattering, would you not use a filter that multiply the color? 
Maybe, maybe. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that if you do a selection and you press the adjustment curve, you can get a very good one effect. And maybe with the slider and with the curve, have more control. Secular mm. asks, can you show zoomed up? So yeah, the piece zoomed, you can see it's still a lot of random stroke. I will try to, <clears throat> before going further, and maybe I, I still I will still paint during 15 minutes. I will not take more than that. <clears throat> I will try to add some interest in the background because the background now uh, is not really how I like. So we have too much density of detail here and here and nothing. Um, I have to fill the void. Maybe this is a, a bad thing about my hard work. So I'm picking the herb, this one, stamp grass. And I'm creating a new layer. <clears throat> you, can you can hear that I'm not used to, to speak during one hour. My voice quickly go totally uh, weird. And I will just paint this type of grass on the background. Yeah, ah, it, it has a, a bit of depth. I, I like that. Maybe I will also do it on the, this ground, but for that I will probably use a, a regular brush. And because this type of mist is uh, not far away, we will get some color a bit. So this is too, too much saturated. Woo. So it's it's very hard for the stroke to look convincing uh, going outside of the water unless you you just press the eraser and you just cut here. It looks more like a plane that is going out of the water like this. We can also shape them for pointiness. Like that, yeah. I'm picking this color. Maybe I will do another herbs layer above the dragon. And, and this is a good tip. If you have a floor background, middle ground and foreground, uh, make some overlaps like here. Something that overlaps the shape. There is always more depth to this type of thing. Uh, we still have to get in mind that it's a 2D surface. And yeah, on a 2D surface, we have to some of doing tips and tricks to get the illusion of this is a 3D scene. So I'm shading a bit. I have probably some grass here that catch some rim light. Good. Good, 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 good. So yeah, maybe subsurface scattering also for the for the grass. Maybe <laughs> maybe uh, some ripple effect down the grass. Yeah, you can go crazy with details and maybe I will not get the time here to focus on that. But I want to add a foreground. And for the foreground, I think I will go very lazy. I will just pick a uh, black. I will just press shift to make this grass brush very big. And I will just uh, put some very big grass like as if it was in front of the camera like this. But because it's in front of the camera, it's also it doesn't have also the the focus point on it. So uh, I will just blur that, going to filter, blur, blur. And just going to increase this by, I don't know, 15 pixel, uh, maybe more, 20 pixel in background, in foreground. Yep, looks good. Probably reduce a bit the opacity so it doesn't go, take, it doesn't steal the focal point. And hey, 
I still have a little bit of time and maybe uh, now this artwork. Oh, there is a question of Noir. Hi, David. What version of Krita are you using right now? Yeah, it's a uh, 4.3.0 beta and there is a git tag because it's even not the beta one. It's a, a one that is uh, probably five days ago or something. And um, I will probably get time to, to push this artwork to something that I prefer because now it's a bit of a fantasy regular artwork, but I would like to push it into the world of pepper and carrot for a reason. And uh, yeah, it will take only five or 10 minutes. So I'm doing it. I will probably make a surprise here. So maybe it's time for also naming layer like grass up, like grass down, dragon, nice surprise and foreground. So I, I usually rarely name my layers and yeah, only in demonstration I do that. <laughs> it's because there is a very beautiful feature in Krita is if you press the R key on the keyboard, you have this cursor and you can pick directly the layer so that you see I'm picking the background and I'm picking the dragons and I'm picking the background and I'm picking the foreground. It's very convenient. So naming layers, it's good when you share your artwork with an audience or with a, a, a company or for collaboration. But when I do speed painting for myself, I usually keep the layer one, layer my layer one. <laughs> Push is more often pronounced push and push. <laughs> okay, thank you. Will you have it in a pepper and carrot comic like the other creator you made in live stream? Yes, but maybe not for the next episode. But yeah, I, I need to, to, to make maybe these dragons, these groompy dragons. If I can push it, because right now it's it's still a bit too, too fantasy. So I have a little idea in back of my mind. I, I want to make a little guy sitting here on the nose because yeah, we have a lot of direction here that just lead to this point and, and I have this focal, this focal point and I think it would balance well to get something happening here also on the piece. So maybe, yeah, because you know that I love the cat. So maybe a little cat like that. So I start the shape, the silhouette with the color of the deepest shadow I have for this creature, this little cat. And I, I try to shape. This takes a little bit more time because I'm trying to shape now a silhouette that I would recognize maybe as carrot. Yeah, I would like to get the something that would annoy this wonderful dragon like that, like the tail going down. That would make this dragon directly more friendly. And I will lock the alpha and probably start to shade the shape of this little Carrot up. So what can it do? What can it do? Oh, yeah, water. I have my little idea about it also. So rim light. <laughs> and I will probably, before doing accessories, try to to get my cartoony character here. I'm picking uh, this pencil because I'm entering a bit into detail. I will really keep it sim simple, maybe like that. Not really very much accurate. Uh, 
Ah, it's more like a fun detail. And I want to make him So no, this is not, this is something to fish. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's a very good spot when you can have a dragon friend. And if you can go on a lake like this, I would very, very like so yeah, I have to, to go to do again the, the, the maybe like that and maybe with the V key, um, I will do something like this. Um, I, I'm making him watch here. So yeah, like that. And this string, maybe I need to make some little highlight on it. Voila. So it looks a bit better. Um, I don't know, th this dragons for me, and ah, not painting on dragon if I'm not on the dragon layer. Up. Um, I, I wanted to say that this dragon for me looks like a, more like an Asian dragon for a reason. Um, now I can make him look like this. To this create to, to this little carrot maybe the the white eyes was a bit too aggressive maybe this way it looks better i have also a bit of texture that can appear on the dragon here and yeah for, for, for maybe i have i have so much little idea this is my problem when i start speed painting and on a hard work it's I, I, al I always want to go very, very uh, adding details, adding storytelling, adding uh, why this creature does this, why this. Ah, that's, that's because I love comics. I love also storytelling and uh, uh, discovered maybe late in my life that I was doing drawing only to tell stories. So. <laughs> That's probably one of the problem when I, I stopped my career as a book cover artist or something is I, I was doing just too much illustration and it was hard to, to do a lot of illustration that just, they tell a story, but not as much as I wanted. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for this little disgration. <laughs> Yeah, this is the stereotypical Chinese hat. I'm sorry about that, but yeah, it looks good because now we can recognize that this is like a, a rice lake. Uh, it's like fishing. This little guy is, has a hat. He looks way more sympathetic and I have a triangle shape, so I'm really happy. <laughs> The dragon should stare at carrot. Yeah, thanks. It's done. Hey, Olga, thank you for coming. Fishing cat. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for the little heart. <laughs> so, yeah, right now, maybe I will just finish the piece because uh, it's more than one hour than I do this. It's four o'clock and ten. And if you have various question about Krita, uh, feel free to, to, to tell them on the LGM workshop. Uh, I'll be replying them now and, uh, and maybe helping if you have something you can't do. Uh, I would be happy to, to help about that. So, yeah, feel free to ask your question. Uh, you also should know that uh, on this channel right now, you have probably all the developer and contributor of Krita or a big part of them. So, yeah. <laughs> Niva, do you sell your work art? Uh, I have a red bubble shop uh, on my website. So if you, if you go to my website, 
uh, davidrevoir.com, uh, you can find the red bubble shop for some goodies. Thank you a lot for the tips, really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm doing a little basket because I want to, to show that this tiny carrot or little cat had some fishing already. And, and Ramon told something that is a, a great is, um, yeah, maybe this is a tiny bit too contrasted. I, I want something like that, but not contrasted. Like bright. Yep. And darker at the same time. Good. And I will just pick here just a blue tone just to make sure this guy already fished some some stuff. <laughs> just to show him that yeah, he was successful at it. So casted shadows and casted shadows is a is a good point and thank you Ramon for for this yeah we have a strong light source here and uh, of course here I forgot a big casted shadows so I will just put a layer shadow just under the foreground and oops I have a a private message that came boom and. With a multiply layer blending mode, I will keep all the, the ripple effect on the water. Like that. Ooh. So yeah, maybe it's, this is just a, a cheap effect. Oops. Maybe I should put it under the dragon. So yeah, I will get no overlap and maybe I have a contact shadow, but my desktop is starting to, to die for a reason. I, I'm probably going to save incremental version. Okay. Contact shadow here. Good. So on the dragon, maybe a little contact shadow also for the little guy. And for the basket and for the cat just locking the alpha and I promise this is the last touch because I want to paint the stripe of carrot and yes let's call this done and thank you very much for following I will take now your question and uh, yeah we can I can open another Krita documents and uh, we can have 10 minutes for that Ah, uh, thank you, Ivan. Ah, uh, zero grad. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Murph. Ah, uh, Boren. Good to see you around. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it looks like the Jitsi setup and with the GUVC view and the tiny chat. Everything worked. I will go to look at. Uh, yeah, one hour ten simple screen recorder. Good. So, so Divad, what is the shortcut for pick select layer again? It's the R key. So yeah, here. So yeah, you can read here, and yeah, I pick dragon. Here are the little interrogation, but this is a cat. I'll probably rename carrot and R for the sun and I go to background directly. Any other question? Zooming in. <laughs> You're welcome. Ah, that's good. 
I can appreciate with that the latency of the streaming. Maybe you can also, because you can see the, the chat. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching it, Glaya. Thank you very much, Elisa. And thank you for all the email for to, to prepare the, the workshop. That was great. So where this will be uploaded, uh, I think I will upload a copy on my YouTube channel. And there will be one also if uh, Ziograd is around on the Peertube channel, named uh, toupai.peertube. Uh, I don't have the name, but maybe it will, it will pass because I think he is around on the chat. <laughs> thank you, Timothy, and thank you for being available for the test. <laughs> thank you, Maria. OK, I will send you the, the recording I have, Timothy. So I'm scrolling a bit. I think I catch, I caught all the question. <laughs> and uh, if Timothy agree with it, we can cut it. <laughs> Merci encore. Thank you very much. And have a fun afternoon or day for your time zone. Bye bye. <laughs>